Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at the uh, solution to the classification of matter uh, Pogel activity. And so here you're going to notice we have the nine diagrams, these different shapes uh, that are all included in model one that are demonstrating uh, some elements, uh, compounds, mixtures of things. And so we're going to go through the, uh, the exercise. First thing I wanted us to do is circle a molecule of RSQ. And so it's already kind of been labeled here for us. If you look, it's got, uh, let's see, I'm going to select the pen. So it already has kind of the molecule here selected. Okay, and it says how many atoms are any molecule of RSQ? Well, the answer would be two because these individual shapes are labeled as atoms. So looks like we have two. All right, for the second one, it says uh, circle a molecule of T SQ2R. All right, so we have to look for TSQ2R, and it's actually this model right here, right below it. So if we want to circle one of those molecules, that would be an example of this. And then it says uh, how many different types of atoms are found in a model of TSQ2R? Well, it looks like we have a round one, uh, we have square ones, and a triangle. So that answer is going to be three. There's three types. There's a total of four, but three types. And then next it says, how many square atoms are in a model of T SQ2R? It looks like there's two. There's one here and one here. Okay. Uh, for the next one, number three, it says, how many different types of atoms are found in a model of SQR3 and TSQ? So we're looking at this set right here. And so how many different types of atoms? Well, there are square ones, there are round ones, there are triangular ones. So that is also three. And then it asks how many different types of molecules are in this? Well, this is one type of molecule. This one's the same. This one's the same. This is another type of molecule. This matches that guy. Answer, two different types of molecules. All right, next one for number four. What does it mean when two atoms are touching in the drawings in Model 1? Well, anytime you have things touching, it is implying that they are chemically bound together. Okay, so they are formed, they formed a molecule. Notice a molecule can be different elements. They can be the same element. Um, you can have different molecules within the same, uh, within the same model. So when they're touching, they're bonded together. They are a molecule. Uh, for 4B, what does it mean when two atoms or molecules are not touching in Model 1? Well, when they're separate, that means they're not bonded. And so uh, in examples like uh, this first one or this guy, uh, it's demonstrating that they have uh, just a bunch of different atoms. Here we have some different atoms. We have some molecules. Um, and so it could be just a, a group of, of individual atoms. It could be a mixture of, of atoms and molecules. It could even be a mixture of molecules, all right? So uh, when they're not touching, it means they're not bound together. Number five, can a particle be a single atom? Most definitely. Here are some examples where we have particles that are like single atoms, okay? And then it says, can a particle be a molecule? Most definitely. Many examples where this is a particle, you know, when you have two things that are touching, those are all molecules, they're all particles. Uh, for 5C, how many particles are there in the drawing representing T and R, S, Q, and R? So we're looking at this model, this one right here. Okay, and so it's asking how many particles are totally in that? Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Total of eight particles. Some of them are atoms, some of those are molecules, but there are a total of eight. For number six, we're going to compare the codes list at the top of each drawing. Okay, and let's close that. Well, let's see. What do the letters R, S, Q, and T represent? Well, anytime you see R, you see a bunch of round shapes, right? Anytime you have T, it's representing something that has triangles. And then anything that has SQ, it's representing things that have squares in them. So round, square, triangle. For 6B, what do the small numbers or the subscripts in the code represent? 
Anytime you have a subscript, like for instance here, SQ2, it's telling me there are two squares. Here it says R3, three round things, right? So the subscript tells you how many of the thing directly in front of it there are. All right, 6C. When atoms are touching, how is that communicated in the code? Anytime they're touching, notice the letters are, are kind of smooshed together, all right? So here they're all touching, they're all smushed together. There's no space between them. Notice every time you have a new shape, there's a capital letter, but uh, there's no space between them. And then 6D, when atoms or molecules are not touching, how is that communicated? So, for example, in this instance, we have the SQR3, which are here, and the TSQ, they're not touching. They're separated by an AND, that ampersand symbol, okay? So anytime they're not touching, there's a space and, and an AND present. Uh, for 6E in Model 1, there are three drawings labeled question mark. Write the codes for these drawings. So here's the first one. Notice they're all triangles in here, so this is only going to be T. Okay, this one, okay, they're all the same. Notice they have a, uh, they have a square and three circles, so you could say, you could do this SQ and then R3, or you could do R3SQ. There's no rhyme or reason, because if you look, it's not consistent in the other models. Here, R becomes before SQ. Here, SQ comes before R. So either one would be acceptable. There's no rule stating one has to be one way and one has to be the other. Uh, and then for this last one, notice we have some squares that have two of them together, so we're going to say SQ2, and then AND, we also have some round ones in there. And once again, just like before, you could say R and SQ2 would also be acceptable. So either of those would be fine for uh, 6E. All right, for this next part of number 7, it wanted you to separate these nine diagrams. I gave you specific instructions not to because there were questions on the back. Uh, I can demonstrate the separation here digitally. I can take these little pieces and I can kind of pull them over here and we can put them in a stack and then we can sort them as we see fit for uh, numbers 8 and 11. All right, so here I've got all my cards separated and it says uh, matter can be either classified as either a pure substance when all the particles are identical, or if they have different things, then they're going to be considered a mixture. So over here, I'm going to list these things as pure substances, and over here I'm going to put the mixtures. And notice in the packet, it tells you how many of each there should be, all right? So let's look at these individually, okay? Pure substance should look uniform, should have all the same stuff in it. This definitely doesn't. This is going to be an example of a mixture. This one, notice how each one of those molecules is identical, T, S, Q, 2, and R. That's an example of a pure substance. Okay, let's look at this one. Definite different things in it. It's going to be another example of a mixture. This one, S, Q, 2, definitely a pure substance. They're all the same. This one, they're all the same, the RSQ, all the molecules within. Same thing with this one, all the same, pure substance. All the same, another pure substance. Here's another mixture where it has more than one thing in it. And then finally, this one, pure substance. So for number eight, the pure substances are grouped together, the mixtures are grouped together. Nine says, how are the, the codes, the formulas, for the pure substance different from that of mixtures? Notice these are all kind of one thing. These have more than one thing, and they're separated by and. So this has stuff, the, the things that uh, aren't similar, that aren't touching, definite mixture, all right? So the next one, we're going to get rid of these. We're going to get rid of all the uh, mixture ones. Let's just eat those out of here. Okay, and so now we're going to look at this group again, and we're going to determine... Out of the pure substances, some of them are representing compounds and some are representing elements. So I'm going to take this stack, I'm going to stack them down here, and it should be 
half and half. If you look at the uh, number 11 on the packet, it has equal numbers of each. So we'll put elements over here. We'll put compounds over here. All right. So for elements, they're going to be made up of only one type of atom. Compounds are going to be two or more atoms kind of bonded together. So let's sort these. This one, definitely a compound. It has triangle, square, and round atoms. This one, SQ2, even though there is a number two, there's only one type of shape. That's actually an element. That would what's be called, that's what's called a diatomic element. Uh, this one, RSQ, more than one element, compound. This one, which would be, we said R3SQ, also a compound. All these triangles would be elements, same with all the round ones. Okay, how are the codes or the chemical formulas for elements different from those of compounds? Elements are made up of only one shape. And then finally, the last part we did here, number 13, it said, uh, use what you've learned about chemical formulas to identify the following. It's either a compound or a mixture. And so in looking at some of these here, I'm going to make a new page. Um, anytime you have just one element, so only one capital letter, for example, it has bromine. Here's the first one. That's an example of a diatomic. That's an element. For B, sodium bicarbonate. Notice it's made of sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. This thing is a compound. Uh, the next one we have, it looks like glucose, C6H12O6, and water. While both of those are compounds, this and means that this thing is a mixture. It is a mixture of sugar and water. Okay, it's not a compound. It doesn't have a definite proportion. You could have just a little bit of sugar and a lot of water, or you could have like equal amounts, and that would be a different a ratio of those components. So it's not a compound. It's made up of compounds, but it itself is a mixture. Same thing here for D. We have copper and zinc. Same deal. Okay, it's made up of elements, but it doesn't tell you the exact proportion because they're not chemically bound, bonded together. This is another example of a mixture. Uh, for E, it's got carbon dioxide, definitely a compound. And then finally, F is aluminum, one capital letter. That is an element. Thank you.